is poverty for which is defined as the state of one who lacks a usual or socially acceptable amount of money or material possessions, a place or is poverty for which is defined as a renunciation as a member of a religious order of the right as an individual to own property, a state of mind, right? Because if you um, live in a state of poverty, then you live and then you are one who lacks something that's usual. See, so look, usual, according with usage, custom, or habit. So if you get used to living in poverty, then you make poverty a custom. Look, okay, custom. A usage or practice common to many or to a particular place or class or habitual uh, with an in, or habitual with an individual. So see, if you live in a spiritual a spiritual world, then when would you exist in human form? Now, you would um, be in human form, but when you born, you born a human. But what can you do? in your existence if you are a baby. You need somebody to take care of you until you get old enough to take care of yourself, right? So now you in a state of poverty because you lack what is usual and acceptable because you can't do nothing for yourself. See, now, if you live in that mindset, then you will do anything, right? See, then that's unacceptable to get out of what you accepting or what you don't accept. But somebody who um, you living with, it could be a mother, a father, mother and father or a relative or an adopted family or whomever your situation is individually living in. See, but what you should take into consideration is that you going to have to provide for what you lack tomorrow. So now you have a choice. Do I continue on this in this mindset or do i change my mindset gradually because the time that i have to spend developing i need to use wisely now i tell you that because of the time <clears throat> excuse me because of the time i spent writing this book you see now, say if I lived in a in a poor state of mind, right? Then my my time would have been poorly spent. You see what I'm saying? Because I spent no time developing my mind. I spent time complaining about what was happening to me. But because I, as a child, was told and shown things, I've been through things that other people don't think I've been through because of my age. But what about my father's age and my mother's age? And I had to grow up in their understanding of life. I had to grow up in my grandmother's understanding of life and my aunt Felder's understanding because I was growing with these people. I stayed with all of these people and they all gave me something. And that's all I'm telling a child, right? Stop complaining about where you at and start dreaming about where you want to be. 
and and then learn what it takes to get to where you want to be. Like I told my daughter through text message one time, I said, if you pray to God, right, to be something, and you don't learn, right, how to be what you praying to God to be, then how can you be what you don't work at becoming? Right? So then I say, well, if you pray to God for something, because see, this is the lesson I was teaching my children. So you can only give a child so much, even though they getting everything because they seeing it all, but they don't sit down and go through the X's and O's of finances, but they go through the ebbs and flows of life because they can't, if you ain't, don't have the economy, then they can't dream. See, so that's why I'm trying to show, show the, the image of me which is the male image of a father, my fatherly image. I don't mean to uh, down any other father, but I just don't want to be less than the father I am, you see? So I'm saying, I supposed to be able to come to you as I am. And if I am a man, why would you try to make me less than the man I am? I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm an employee. I'm an employer. I'm a union man. I'm a veteran. I'm saying, man, I'm so many different things. How could you put me in a box? So now, I'm going to read my testimony, and then I'm going to read the Prophet Muhammad's testimony, and then I'm gonna read uh, John's testimony. So, so I'm um, uh, no no uh, Proverbs. So that's David, uh, and it's when it says Solomon's Proverbs, because it says Solomon's proverb of the wise son. So I'm gonna read some of that. I'm gonna read uh, um, chapter nine of um, the the uh, Quran verses 27 through uh, 31. So that means, see, so that's what I'm letting y'all know. Like, this is my actual testimony. It said, and this is uh, The Gift by Tommy Castle, page 134. It says, wrote as laws are written after a silver action is concluded. So I of timelines understanding understood that my time was now according to timeline of laws written travel from its humble beginnings began upon the mountain of Mount Sinai and has flowed through every town, country, and valley within this world of ours. But yet we of this world is still confu confused within this world. We was the spiritual father, who, oh, excuse me, who was the spiritual father of Jesus Christ for whom teachings Jesus Christ followed the only man in the Bible for whom it is written of within the pages of the Bible itself that brought the Israelites out of slavery within the land of Egypt safe and sound and then he for whom the Bible called Moses brought the Israelites to the base of Mount Sinai and went up by him by himself to be judged by God and God gave him for whom we call Moses the laws for which we until this day still call them what Moses called the Israelite told the Israelites that they were for which they as we now still do call them the Ten Commandments. Moses knew as I knew and is not and is now validated by the things I must face within my exodus is uh, middle with when I brought my small exodus to the foot of the count, I mean foot of the court, and my case of birth backed up the corrupt court for which now 
bows in the middle, your, no, excuse me, bows in the middle from the middle of both ends of history's biblical as well as modern stories for which twist back and forth from reality's physical understanding and their religious position for which leaves justice as justice has always been looking for itself within itself out of the corrupted view of corruption's view as one for whom obeys sees and points atop the mountain Sinai where all should where all should Moses as Moses is being taught by the heavenly father but from the middle of both stories of modern and biblical similarities one of biblical understanding is standing within one's physical presence lost within one's biblical understanding and looking at something that they couldn't understand biblically for which they are now forced to live through physically within their understanding that is confused by their biblical understanding colliding with the physical image of the same image lost within the image of those within their written images read and only a uh, only image now faced for which was bigger than they had even imagined how do they now act with this with belief or disbelief how can they for whom they now read of have more faith than those for whom now read of the faith of those for whom showed their faith so brightly that it has shown unto this generation as brightly as it has as it once had shown within their own generation for which today they know see now then this is um the prophet muhammad's testimony about his encounter with his people so now it says uh this is chapter 9 verse uh of the shihid international version of the holy quran and it's uh, 27 through 31 and it says then allah will accept repentance after that for whom he wills and Allah is forgiving and merciful. O oh, you who have believed, indeed, the palathesis are unclean. So let them not approach A-L-M-A-S-J-I-D-A-L-H-A-R-A-M after this, their final year. And if you, and if you fear privations, now that's privations, is... Um, I'm gonna look it up here. And I'm gonna show you that that's what it say. Privations. Cause that what it's look. Privations. 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 So to me, privations. An act or instance of depriving. See, so now that's the act of denying knowledge. Is an act of depriving. Right? So now. So we got to get back to, okay, so now Allah will enrich you from his bounty if he wills. Inside, uh, indeed, Allah is knowing and wise. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger has made unlawful and do not adopt the religion of truth. I mean, and do, and, and, Wait a minute. And may unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth. So it's a who. So it's, it's saying if you or I didn't um, adopt my truth or your truth, then we are not a true religion. See, if I would have gave up my truth, then how could I be a religion? See, the, I wouldn't be the truth, the light, nor the way. Because then I would be telling you, the prophet Muhammad's truth. So see, now the prophet Muhammad is the messenger because I am giving the message of my truth and I am now giving you the prophet Muhammad's message that you should be able to clearly see me, an innocent man loving you as an Islamic brother would love his brother. But how can I be your brother when I haven't studied 
your world. So why wouldn't I be Allah if I don't, if I come to you doing what he did? See, I'm not telling you what he going to do. I'm telling you when I did what the prophet Muhammad said Allah would do with, and I loved you without knowing what you believed. That, that would, I'm, see, I'm a layman. I, I don't, I'm not a clergyman. I'm not a Muslim, but I loved you the same, just like the prophet Muhammad said I would. See, so I'm saying, listen, I'm learning your understanding because I don't like being in poverty. I don't like lacking understanding. See, you see poverty monetarily. I see poverty knowledge-wise. See, so that's why you would need money to buy me, but I would need money to win you because I use my knowledge to that you would have had to use uh, money to buy a lawyer who, who my enemies, lawyers, now need lawyers, the judges now need lawyers. <laughs> See, everybody who encountered me need a lawyer except those for whom I know was confused. See, that's what I put in my testimony. So that's the, but see, I'm saying, see how I was talking about Moses' exodus in my exodus? <laughs> see what I'm saying? Like I'm saying, that was not, I'm 54 now. This right here, I don't know how, I know I was in between 39, well no, cause I, I didn't start writing a book to 2010 because I, I I I started writing it after they put me in jail the first time. So I started writing a book that was 2010. 2010, I was 40. I was 41. So that's been 13, 14, going on 13 and a half years. I've been writing this book. So from 41 to 54, but it can't be 54 because that's not. And I, I had it published in, let me see. I had it published in 2000. It's copyrighted and published in 2018. See, so I was at, what, I'm 50. I was born in 69, uh, so I was uh, 49. I, I was 49 before I turned 50. So now that's four years and I'm almost 55. So see this, is my actual testimony, man. And I know y'all people, <laughs> man, y'all been doing this to me my whole life. But all I'm asking y'all, man, is can I once be judged by what I do? See, cause now I'm not reacting. See, I'm not, I'm not uh, attacking. I'm not, I'm just explaining. I'm saying, now look, this is what I'm saying when I talk to my mama. I'm saying, mama, now, nah, man, I ain't do nothing. <laughs> See, I'm saying, mom. All I did was follow the law. But y'all say, Tommy Cray, I'm saying, well, don't you talk to your God? <laughs> my mama is my creator. My mama is my earth. My mama is my life. My mama is my everything. And my daddy too. So you talk to your father for whom is in heaven. But if I'm crazy for talking to my mama for whom is in heaven, I know my mama is real. <laughs> like, I know. So we done had conversations, and now those conversations are coming to pass. And now people saying I'm tripping because I'm saying, mama, you knew. But then I'm saying, well, I don't know. I'm telling my kids. So if you go through something, how you don't know what you're going through? But if you don't go through it and get through it, then how you don't know your kids going to go through what you didn't get through? So what my mother did was let me know that I have rights she didn't have because I'm a man. See, see what I'm saying? So she was saying, hey, 
you a man, but you got rights your daddy didn't have, and you want to be a lawyer, so now, learn the laws. You don't have to go to somebody else's school to be what you want to be, unless you are specializing. But the law is everybody's responsibility. See, everybody should be a student of the law. How can you play the game of life and you don't know how the game of life is played? Man, that don't make no sense to me. So see, I'm saying, listen, man, I am not you. You are not me. I do not believe what you believe, but I love you the same. Why do you hate me so much? <laughs> man, God damn. I mean, man, I, I even love the Muslims so much. I went and learned, man, you, I ain't never read the Bible, man, ever. My grandmama, who I love dearly, I never read the Bible. I've never prayed. I don't understand it. But out of love for humanity, why wouldn't you get an understanding of humanity? Like, how can you lead if you arguing over what you say? Not, not what you say, but what somebody else said you should say. But what about your intellect? What about your diagnosing the problem that you exist in, the time where you can do something about what's happening? Why let it go? and let your children's children or your cousins or your nieces or nephews, somebody, man, you got to love somebody, <laughs> man, you got to, man, you should. And if you don't find somebody, right? Because everybody need love, man. They don't need money. See, that's what people don't understand. Money is an illusion of love. Because without it, are you saying I don't love you? <laughs> See, that's what I'm... But then people told me, man, it's, you, it, you, it's all about the money for you. I'm saying, man, I left the money because you kept telling me, well, my family, you think you got money. You And I'm saying, man, I come from less... You didn't know nothing about the project. Now, my brother do, Jess Griffin Park. He stayed in group, but he don't know nothing about South Street Project. He wasn't born. See, I was in two projects. He was in one. See what I'm saying? I'm saying, bro, I'm older than you. My journey started in my life before your journey of life started. So how can you um, want me to, to, to erase my life <laughs> before you came in it? And now you act like you know my life more than me, but I'm saying, how? So now I have to argue over my life and I'm tired, man. I'm saying, look, I went to court. Y'all missed your court date, man. I was in there defending me. Now you want to kill me over somebody else? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. This can't be real. But anyway, so... It's a fight against those who do not believe in our law in the last day and who, do, who, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger has made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the uh, J-I-Z-Y-A-H. And it says it's a tax required of non-Muslims exempting them from military service and entitling them to the protection of the Islamic State. Uh, concurrently, Zuk, Zuk, now this is Z-A-K-A-H, is not taken from them, but is an obligation only unto Muslims. Willingly will they... Why, willingly why they are humbled so see now here i am coming to you humbled but i said but now the prophet muhammad is humbling you and now those who are not is islamic and those are who live in an islamic state now both owe me for the protections that i gave 
in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange counties in the state of Florida on August 12, 2008 at 10.40 in the morning, as well as inside of the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 9.20 in the morning. And I just went and got the Prophet Muhammad out of chapter nine of the Shihi International Version of the Holy Quran, chapter 29. And, and, and now I'm giving you the scriptures. The scripture was given to me when I asked the computer about poverty and the state of poverty and it came back this scripture. So now, I gave you my testimony from the gift. Now I'm reading you the scriptures from the prophet Muhammad. How can I be a blasphemer? How can I be anybody, somebody want to kill? <laughs> I don't understand. The scripture says you owe me money, man, for the protection I gave you. Now you're not going to protect me. Oh, man, this is this what I'm saying. But okay, the Jews say Israel is the son of Allah, and the Christians says, say the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths. They uh, um, imitate the sayings of those who disbelieve before them. See, so that's saying, y'all who saying Jesus, and y'all who saying, uh, see, they say you, you are imitating. Hold on, let, let's break it down, right? You are imitating... Okay, hold on, man. I'm, see, I got to make sure I'm right here. Damn. Man. Operator error. <laughs> it's me. It's me. Okay, now imitate. is is to follow as a pattern, model, or example. Right? So, see, by you practicing your faith, in the same manner that your faith was practiced, now you are on trial for the faith you practiced. See that? See, you are imitating what they said, and you followed in their footsteps, and now your footsteps has led you into judgment. See, it says. This is their statement from their mouths. They imitate the sayings of those who disbelieve before them. So see, if you keep following in the footsteps of those who keep can't go to court and can't stand up before the Prophet Muhammad's words verbatim, when somebody like me do the work, then the Prophet Muhammad is now with that person saying that they are Allah. See, not because they Muslim. <laughs> See, how would Allah be a Muslim if he God? See, he going to love you in your understanding. That poverty state of mind. That's why you poor. You have nothing to offer me. Because you have nothing to offer yourself. See, See, you can't give 10% of nothing. See, so if you are nothing and all you can do is worship, then what's 10% of worship? What is it? So if you're, if you're not a carpenter, then what's 10% of your time to a builder of a kingdom and you, you don't know how to build nothing? So what is your offering? To me, I gave you wisdom, love, understanding. I'm in your understanding trying to understand you. You telling me that's not a father. I'm not telling you about what I think. I'm telling you what you supposed to think. See, see, I'm saying, okay, um, it says they imitate the sayings of those who disbelieve before them. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? See, this is the prophet Muhammad, man. This ain't me. And I'm saying, well, I did this, what he said would do. I destroyed them in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning and delivered you at the same time. 
and then those who was born in that dark understanding from August 12, 2008 at 10.40 in the morning, I delivered them on the federal level in the federal courthouse on the, in the middle district of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 9.20 in the morning. So now where is the love? Like, why would you be now um, confused by me? I am just as human as you. And why can't you love a word but not love a child? See, I'm saying love a child. Don't, don't love me. Love the child that is me. That's what Jesus was saying. That's what anybody of love is saying because they got to be looking at the child and saying, man, if the parent is sick, the child is catching hell, but I was that child that caught hell, but I'm that father that would rather go through hell than to let my daughter and my son touch it. See, I'm saying, no, nah, they might be going through hell, but not the hell I went through. <laughs> see, see, and I'm letting them know that daddy would do anything to get you out of any kind of state of poverty, whether it's educational poverty, financial poverty, a, a love, a, a lack of love. You, see, you never had that, not Tamika Rayshawn Castle and Tommy Chance and Castle Jr. <laughs> see, they can't never say that they didn't have love. They mother and they father loved them because they loved each other. So if we loved each other, you think we didn't love what we both created out of love? But see, the difference is the upbringing, the fears. See, so she saw me, even though she loved me, she feared parts of me. And, but she loved more of me than she feared. But I was telling her, I'm, I'm leaving this too. I just don't know how. <laughs> See, I want to get out of this life. I just don't know how. So I went to the military to open up some doors, but then I saw I was more of a slave in there than I was in the streets. But that's when I learned that in order to get out of an administrative attack, you have to be administrative. 